dear express readers uh, good evening and welcome to what to what we are sure will be another insightful edition of news you can use news you can use is an engaging and informative online masterclass series for express brand fans and digital subscribers providing practical knowledge and skills that participants can apply to their everyday lives we are glad that you could make it on this summer evening to discuss a hot topic that few people would want to miss is this the right time to buy gold our distinguished guest today is mr somasundaram pr who has had a successful tenure as the former managing director of the world gold council with his rich experience and deep understanding of gold markets mr somasundaram is well placed to unravel the complex world of investing in gold he will be in conversation with indian express assistant editor hitesh vyas Uh, gold has always been an integral part of most indian households the demand for gold in india has remained steadfast despite recent historic highs in its prices it is apparent this precious metal has an irresistible attraction whether it is in the form of jewelry coins or bars made out of gold what accounts for this enduring infatuation with gold especially the indian infatuation with gold and why do so many indians prefer to invest their money their entire wealth in gold today's session will focus on what makes people buy more shares um, in gold in terms of real returns versus other investments available while covering the factors behind the rise in commodity prices including oil and gas so we are thrilled to have you with us for this deep dive into the dynamics of gold as an investment we hope this session will equip you with with valuable insights and practical knowledge to make informed decisions in your gold investment journey thank you for being here let's get started over to hitesh thank you and good evening to all uh, welcome mr somasundaram so i just want to understand uh, from you what makes this yellow metal a preferred investment uh, avenue for indians it's got uh, a lot of historical reasons india was uh, one of the largest trading partners uh, in the world you know years ago and gold was always a currency so uh, one reason could be <clears throat> that we always treated this uh, currency or with uh, uh, because we were trade partners we always treated this currency with respect and that became part of our culture and it's very clear you know the way we handle gold and the way even in a household discussions happen about gold if you go deep into it you will find that look it was not something which was taught to us it's just that ingrained in our belief systems so gold means currency everything else is something which we should work around with it's not like we don't uh, have financial assets etc but one uh, so i would strongly say historical reason of our being a very large global trading nation as bharat is one of the reasons the next is obviously in post independence we have had inflation quite a bit of inflation we have seen how rupee all currencies have depreciated but we have seen rupee also depreciate uh, particularly in the 70s and 80s and all that stuff therefore there was a lot more attraction towards gold because it was one which was uh, beating the inflation in most cases and it was also hard to get so that way the interest in gold also increased for us so i would suggest say that these two reasons you know historical reasons plus uh, post independence inflation and uh, the depreciation of rupee have added to the luster of gold for indians sir we have seen the, the gold prices is now hovering around 72000 for 24, 24 carat gold per 10 gram if we compare from the last year it has risen by 20% so what has led to this rise in gold prices you see india first of all in rupee when you look at uh, 72000 you know whether it is 72 75 with uh, gst whatever it is it is uh, actually dependent on the dollar prices right because gold is traded in uh, dollars right so we have to therefore see behind it and see how has the dollar prices moved so simply for us prices have risen because dollar prices have risen now why have the dollar prices risen dollar prices have risen for various reasons uh, we could obviously go around discussing that in this uh, di uh, discussion uh, next uh, couple of uh, maybe uh, next hour or so but one of the main reasons 
that the uh, you know the prices started moving up in fact if you see they started moving up since 2019 one of the reasons is the us uh, rates you know there was you know as the rates kept moving up people expected that uh, you know gold price will drop but since 2019 gold prices started hardening okay and then there is this expectation of rate cuts now Okay, because when you have a rate cut, because gold does not yield you anything, it doesn't give you an interest. So when the in, uh, general interest rates are lower, the cost of keeping gold becomes lower. Therefore, there is more attraction towards gold. This is the this is the theory, right? But gold kept going up even when the rates were going up, and now there is a talk of a rate cut. There is also uh, and now more uh, uh, in uh, what I would say uh, momentum towards the price rising. The next is the geopolitical factors. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty and uncertainty is always good for gold. Okay. And the uncertainty, why has the uncertainty arisen? It is not just about the financial markets. It's also about, you know, what's happening, uh, you know, the Middle East crisis, the Russian-Ukraine war, you know, what's going to happen to various currencies, what's going to happen to oil. You know, oil prices have risen and gold has that... Uh, I wouldn't say direct correlation, but gold has some correlation. This because when oil crude goes up, you know, gold price keeps uh, moving up. So this has also contributed to geo geopolitical tensions, right? And the third one is again to a limited extent is you know the bit the the cryptocurrencies which were uh, not a big threat. They always were supposed to coexist. They also went into a volatile scenario. So people realize that look having a physical metal which does not corrode, which does not, uh, uh, you know, rust, you know, which remains for centuries is the best way because it was a currency till 1972, till the gold standard was removed. But even today, central banks hold it, you know, <clears throat> people hold it. You can get a loan against it. So it is also partly used in the monetary system across countries. Therefore, uh, it is, uh, you, you, uh, if you really look at it now, the geopolitical factors have driven towards this. The third one, I would say, uh, or the fourth one, apart from crypto, is that, the, uh, you know, across countries now, there is also this concept, uh, which is now coming out, like saying, why are central banks buying a lot of gold? So that has, has it led to a rise in price? I wouldn't say directly there is, uh, uh, you know, central banks buy, therefore prices go up. You know, gold doesn't react like that. Gold demand actually reacts to price. But what has happened is the central bank buying and across the world, every central bank is buying. That has influenced the sentiment towards gold. There is a very positive sentiment towards gold. Okay, now this is an asset to have and everything else, you know, really goes, uh, uh, Ari, I can depend on gold. And there is a robust market for gold. The very important thing in all this is gold is a very liquid asset. Internationally, it's very, very liquid. That is what strengthens its role in all this. Okay, Because what I have said today, geopolitical tensions, uh, you know, um, US interest rates, applies to various commodities. Okay, Now, they all don't react exactly the way uh, gold does. That's because gold is highly liquid. On the one hand, it is it is uh, treated as a currency, an investment, right? I mean, investors, central banks buy it, they keep it in the reserves, etc. On the other hand, people buy it as jewelry and keep it and just take it out only when they want a loan or they want to sell it. Okay, so this combination is is uh, very very difficult to find in the sense whatever metal has been mined remains with us it is it's not destroyed right i mean once you become it's made into a jewelry it's not like it's not gold it can come back in the form of a gold bar so nearly about 50 60 percent of gold still is in the form of jewelry and that doesn't come into the market regularly it only comes when there is a crisis and you know an occasion now that's a fantastic thing you ask any person if 60 percent of uh, you know a, a particular stock it does not uh, come into the market at all. You know what happens to the 40% 40, uh, 40 you know, obviously, you know, it will have greater value, right? That's what is happening to gold. Sir, uh, you said 50 to 60% of gold is in the form of physical, whether jewelry or gold bars. 
But what are the other instruments one can look while investing in gold? And could you also elaborate the advantages and disadvantages of other instruments? Sure. Yeah. So first of all, 100% of gold is in the form of um, you know, physical bars, okay? I'm talking about jewelry versus bars and coins and others, right? ETFs and all that stuff. Uh, there are obviously futures market and things like that, which actually drive the prices ahead of the physical demand. But we must know when we talk about gold, we do not talk about the promise to give you gold. We are talking about physical gold. That's what makes gold attractive and trustworthy. Because I have a piece of metal which I can take anywhere in the world and I can sell it and uh, get some value for it, right? If there is a crisis, you know, there are many, many uh, crises the world has faced. You look at people moving from one place to the other because of a war or something. The one thing they will lay their hands on is gold because you can always go to the other country nearby and sell the gold, right? It doesn't happen with a promise, right? So what we are talking about is physical gold, 100%. Now, within physical gold, there are also instruments as you spoke about. Now, we'll, let's talk about what are those. Now, specifically, I will talk about India. I'll talk about the uh, India. 80% of gold demand is in the form of jewelry. 80% of our 700 to 800 tons. We buy 700 to 800 tons every year. China buys 900 to 1000 tons. These are, you know, broad uh, ranges I'm giving you. It is all physical, right? Even the ETF market, exchange traded funds, as we call it, is also a physical market. It is backed by gold. It is not a promise to give you gold. Sovereign gold bond is a promise to give you gold, but not ETF. We'll talk about sovereign gold bond in a minute because it's also very well integrated into the gold market in India. And there is no such instrument anywhere in the world which gives you a coupon and an upside in gold. But leave that aside. ETF is the other big thing. Apart from jewelry, bars and coins, you have ETFs. Okay. Now there are newer ways of investing in physical gold itself, apart from ETF, which is a digital gold. You know, you can actually buy it on digital apps. There are one or two apps. Um, run by a few companies where, uh, you know, you can buy for as little as 10 rupees and keep accumulating it. It is held in a, in a uh, designated vault, you know, so it is not yet covered by a regulatory framework, but uh, a few big players are working on that. And they have become very popular these days because you can, you can just buy gold anytime you need and accumulate it and then get it uh, delivered. All right. But still, as I said, it is uh, the weak link is that it is not regulated yet. ETFs, as you know, is regulated by SEBI. You can go buy anytime. All the mutual funds, uh, houses, they give the ETFs. Now, there are, I think, at this moment of time, if I'm correct, I may not be exact uh, about the number. There are about 14 ETFs or 12 ETFs. OK. And we have about 44 tons in, in custody in the vault. OK, it's not a very big number compared with what happens in the US, about 3,500, 3,800 tons. OK, but still it's growing. Right. So ETF is one form of gold. Uh, bars is another form of gold. Coins is another form of gold and jewelry. I mean, broadly, these are the categories apart from digital gold. Again, digital gold, if you see, it's not a paper gold. It is gold bought on an app digitally, but backed by gold. You're not saying I will, I promise to give you gold when you ask me. No, I keep your gold in a separate vault and it is uh, in, a, in an independent custodian, etc. That's the promise that is, uh, that's the, that's the undertaking that is there. So all these are the various gold <clears throat> things. Having said that, if you want to take pure price position, there are of course, pure, you know, <clears throat> we have options, futures, the commodity exchanges these days have come out with some very, very interesting aspect. And then I will talk about two new instruments which have just come in. <clears throat> they have not fully uh, uh, marketed yet and they're not fully launched also because there are a few uh, um, uh, you know things that are being worked out regulatorily. One is uh, the uh, bullion depository receipt. That's not for domestic investors. That is uh, for the international bullion exchange in gift city. 
you can buy it in dollar. So if you have dollar investments in gold, you could do BDR, bullion depository receipt, which is nothing but real gold kept in a vault, which is marked as a depository receipt. And you can just give the depository receipt anytime and take your gold. Okay. But, uh, you know, ordinary Indians can't do it unless you have dollar, you know, you are transferring money, etc. So, but that is a very uh, uh, recent instrument that has come in. The next is on the domestic side, you have electronic gold receipt, which is very similar, which says that it will keep certain amount of gold, whatever electronic gold receipt you buy from the exchanges, it is actually marked, the gold is kept aside in a vault. And you can trade. Uh, you can actually trade the instrument without taking physical uh, jewel, uh, uh, delivery. You can also take physical uh, delivery. Now that was launched by SEBI. There is a uh, very elaborate regulatory network around it, but it has not uh, been launched by the exchanges, domestic exchanges, because there is the, still that aspect of GST which is being talked about, not GST on every purchase. That is exempt. You buy an EGR. I buy an EGR from you. That is exempt. But what happens is the first person who takes the gold and converts it into an EGR to trade in the exchange, he has already paid the GST. Now, how is he going to get it if it is going to be there? All right. So that is uh, uh, under discussion. But once uh, that gets sorted, it will be another good instrument for the uh, investors apart from ETFs. So these are the various ways by which you can invest in gold. Futures, you have some uh, gold-backed instruments like EGR, ETFs. So you definitely can do that. You can buy in the form of coins. You can buy in the form of uh, bars. You can uh, you know, buy jewelry. On top of all this, obviously, since we are talking gold, I'm just covering the entire gamut of it. You could also now have uh, companies which are dealing in gold. I mean, not uh, like Tanishk is the, I mean, a Titan is one which comes. Titan has other businesses, but it's uh, it's known for its uh, jewelry business, one of the largest uh, jewelry business. You could probably hold the share because then you are taking an indirect exposure on gold and gold industry. Similarly, there are other uh, Companies now which are uh, which have come with an IPO like Kalyan Jewelers, you know, there's one in the East. I don't want to keep naming, but there are a lot of shares which give you exposure to the gold market. They are not directly gold. Let me make it very clear. But you still, suppose you don't want to buy gold, but you want to take an uh, exposure to the industry. Earlier that was missing. Now you have that option as well. So what is your view on the sovereign gold bonds? How should one investor look at I mean, it's one of the best instruments. I must say that. Although, you know, I work for World Gold Council and uh, we never supported anything which is not backed by physical gold. This is something very different, right? This is a government uh, uh, promise. So it's, it's almost a currency, right? It's uh, promised by the government of India. And they are saying you have the upside of gold at the end of 70 or whatever, tax exempt. And you get two and a half percent coupon. See, I told you, gold is the only uh, is a commodity which doesn't give you a coupon. That is why it is it is inversely related to the interest rate scenario, right? Now here is an investment which gives you two and a half. You know, I think uh, they started off with two point seven five. Now it's two and a half. Two and a half percent on your original investment. So if I put five hundred thousand rupees, five lakhs, I get two and a half percent on five lakhs year after year. I think on a half early basis, it gets paid. At the end of the seventh year or the eighth year, you it is linked to the gold price of that week. And you get uh, the redemption because the investment is in, in grams of gold, 100 grams, 120 grams uh, at, the, at the price at which it has been issued. One of the best instruments, actually. But... What is the issue? As like any other instrument, everything is always never uh, the best, right? The liquidity is missing. So if you have a long-term view, you can buy this. But if you are a person who says, look, uh, three years, I mean, I want to, you know, I want to sell it or, you know, I want liquidity, then you can't sell it. It's not like an equity share where you can get pick up in the morning and sell it. There is a secondary market, theoretically, and it's not very active. 
So you don't get the price. And in fact, many times people have uh, mentioned, I haven't tried it myself. People have mentioned that in the secondary market, it goes at a discount to the current price. In fact, it's a good thing. If you want to buy, sometimes you can go into the secondary market and buy small quantities at a discount as well. It's a very, very interesting uh, thing. Uh, but yes, it is one of the best products in, I would say, knowing uh, with my knowledge uh, from my ex uh, World Gold Council colleagues, one of the best instruments uh, even globally. Okay. So you spoke about tax part uh, in sovereign gold bond, but uh, what are the tax implications in other gold instruments? Yes. See, physical gold. Let's talk about physical gold, including ETFs, as I said. Uh, it is the three-year rule applies for long-term capital gain. Right? Sovereign gold bond, as I told you, is exempt. But otherwise, you buy gold and you sell gold, you have to pay capital gains tax. So if you sell it within three years, it is short-term capital gains. If you sell it after three years, it is long-term capital gains. Okay? And it is not, uh, uh, you can, um, uh, it, it's not equity shares, not at 10% or whatever. Right. But uh, the issue here is um, when people make small sales, it obviously goes outside the system. That's the, in a sense, that's the advantage or the attraction of gold for uh, probably many housewives or whatever it is, it, because it doesn't just get captured in the tax system yet so fully. All right. Uh, but otherwise, it is, uh, and it's not peculiar to India. Let me also mention this to you. Everywhere it is taxed, the long term capital gain is weighed heavily against gold. Although people treat it as a currency, as a liquid instrument, uh, tax always treats it as a um, non financial asset. Therefore, uh, there is that bit of uh, uh, taxation on that, heavy taxation. It is not, it doesn't promote. Let me put it like this. Now, what is the implication of this? It doesn't promote recycling. You see, what has happened is gold has moved. I mean, look at it. Uh, we have accumulated gold over years, right? Gold prices have moved. Those who bought in 2008, 9, 10, 11, when India's demand touched 1,000, people are sitting on gold. Now, not all of them are going to sell it. The government wants to reduce imports as well. They want that's why they were talking of gold monetization and things like that. So if you want to monetize gold, you got to give an exemption, a kind of an incentive to people to sell gold, to recycle gold, etc. What this tax rule does is actually, you know, push you back from that, uh, uh, you know, what I would say that line of thinking. You know, if I were to sell my gold, yeah, I'll make 100% now. All right. But if I'm going to pay 30% tax or 40% tax, whatever it is, people will hesitate. They'll say, oh, let it be. Okay. Oh. So because of which gold is not recycled as much as it should, which is why India's recycling market is a little opaque. And it is also, um, it's not very, uh, I would say it's not well developed. Okay. But uh, how can gold help an investor in wealth creation and also hedge against inflation? You see, World Gold Council has done a lot of studies. Okay? And a lot of other uh, analysts also have done it. But World Gold Council always you know, takes everybody's views and all that. And there are, um, there are reports which is um, for specific geographies also. They have issued reports on case for gold. In fact, I would urge some of those interested, they can go into the World Gold Council site and um, you know, download these. They are very, very well researched, um, extremely well documented uh, uh, you know, philosophies about how to use gold in your portfolio. One thing is any portfolio, the study has shown specifically to India, I'll say any portfolio with 5 to 15% gold. Now, why 5 to 15%? I'll just explain in a minute. But 5 to 15% gold is stronger than a portfolio without gold. That's been proven with uh, you know, studies over the last 25 years. Okay, Very interesting uh, statistic. See, since 1984, okay, okay, uh, gold has appreciated by 14.3%. This was done, I think the last I saw was 2021. It might have increased now. Gold has increased by 14 to 15%, 14.3% CAGR which is higher than the inflation in India. Okay, so gold has consistently beaten inflation. All right. Now the question is, 
could this have uh, could the stock market have done better? That's not the conversation here. I, all I'm trying to say is gold as an instrument has protected uh, people against inflation. Therefore, as many analysts always say, gold is like an insurance. Okay, When everything else fails, gold will perform. Okay? Because it is the ultimate currency, right? I mean, no one can dispute it. There is, there is no counterparty risk. Physical gold, I'm just saying. There's no counterparty risk. It's not a promise. It is actual physical gold, which is what makes gold, uh, gives a special status to gold. All right. So if we were to say, what should you do it? Always have a portfolio with gold. I wouldn't say put 100% in gold, but definitely for 5 to 15%. Now, how do you determine this? If your portfolio is very risky, Suppose you're, you're taking a very risky portfolio. That's what we used to say even when crypto came in. We said, look, every asset class, I mean, people are investing, it becomes an asset class. You don't have to look at it as a competition. Now, what is crypto? Crypto is a highly speculative, highly risky asset class. So when you invest in crypto, invest more in gold. You know, you shouldn't stay with 5%. But if you are putting it all in bonds and other stuff, you could probably stay with a lower percentage in gold. All right. Now, that is the whole scenario. How does it protect your this thing? We have done enough studies, even on pension funds and things like that. We have seen that the risk adjusted return of a gold back, uh, uh, what I would not gold fully back. I'm saying a portfolio with gold has consistently been better than one without. We have even done for India a specific study on the SBI pension uh, fund, you know, based on that. It's come out very clearly, had taken the prices over various periods of time, the portfolio would have performed much better. You are on mute. Am I? Yes. Sir, uh, now when purchasing gold, physical gold, what are the things uh, one should look at? What are the factors one should consider? Very, very interesting question because it often comes up. How do we buy gold, right? I mean, you're sitting here. Um, <clears throat> how do you buy gold? Do you go and buy a jewelry? Do you go and buy bars and coins? How do I know that's pure? Uh, quite a lot of those questions have been resolved now in India. Earlier, that used to be a big issue. And uh, <clears throat> because if you go to a very well-established jeweler is going to charge you heftily for the uh, for the brand and the purity and all that stuff. So what do you invest in? How do you invest in gold, right? <clears throat> now, what people traditionally have done is uh, they have gone to the jeweler and bought jewelry, which is not wrong, right? I mean, you always, every household requires jewelry. You can always wear it also. And it is anyway gold and gold kept going up. As I told you, the CAGR was 14.3. So it never looked like it was a wrong decision. But right now at 75,000 and, you know, all that and, you know, inching up, people have to make a decision. I have, let's take 2 lakh rupees, 2,000 rupees. Now, how do I buy gold? I want gold. All right. Now you have to be very clear what form of gold you require. And what is the period for which you want to hold gold? All right. It's one thing to say, okay, this is what my grandmother, grandfather, everybody gave it to me. I'm going to hold it, intergenerational asset. There's another one is, no, I just want, you know, the portfolio to improve. Okay. Now, if that is the case, then buying jewelry, because jewelry will not be a good decision. If you don't need jewelry at the point in time, it is not a good decision. But if you need jewelry for an occasion, for, a, a, you know, a, as part of the you know cultural buying or whatever it is, then it is a good decision because you are going to pay more as a labor charge to gold. It's 75,000 or 72 plus GST, whatever is the price today. You are going to pay something for the labor, right? For the, you know, India's jewelry is handcrafted. Obviously, you have to pay, which is what people do. They just go, they want to buy gold and they go and buy jewelry but really they don't want a jewelry. So they keep haggling on the labor charge most of the time. Because if you really need jewelry and if you know that globally, any handmade piece, I mean, how much do you pay for a handmade shoe? 
I mean, if somebody says it's handmade, whatever, you'll pay three times the normal price. Indian jewelry is handmade. There are, there are you know, artisans who have been working on it. But we would want to get it at the lowest price. Nothing wrong, but all I'm, because people have certain amount of money, they want to invest in gold. But this happens because we have been investing in jewelry as investment. If that changes over a period of time, jewelry for wearing, it's also investment, jewelry for wearing, and investment uh, avenues have increased. Let's assume for a minute uh, how to do that, you know, bars, coins, you know, um, pure ones, branded ones, they have all come in. Then what happens is you will pay, you will not mind paying for the handcrafting more. Today, what is happening is you want gold and it is available only through the handcrafted mode. I'm just putting it as extreme. You just go after the one thing you can control, which is labor charge. Right. So to, uh, to answer your question, what do you buy? How do you buy? First thing is decide whether you want jewelry for a wedding, jewelry for some other occasion, you know, child born, you know, you want to get something. That's a different thing. Then you buy a jewelry. But if otherwise you are looking at it as an investment over four years, five years, um, I think then you should think differently. And if you have a seven year, eight year view and you don't really need gold, but you need the upside of gold. Obviously, I told you the best instrument is available for uh, the whole of India, which is the sovereign gold bond. And the government keeps coming with new issues. And if you don't just look for the secondary market, there are small quantities coming through, you know, and you should be able to pick it up. Okay. How, how, how do you compare uh, gold with other instruments in terms of returns, risk, and ease of investment? <clears throat> returns, risk, and ease of investment. You see, uh, people, let's look at the buyers. Okay, People generally buy gold because they expect gold price to keep going up. Okay, yeah. If everybody knows that gold price is going to come up, and we have seen it. Before the budget, always people don't buy. Before the budget, they always expect that there will be a duty cut or you know price will come down, etc., etc. So you buy because you believe gold price will keep going up. Okay, but you still don't buy it for the returns, which is why you we have a lot of stock of jewelry in this country. You know, look at the country. You know, we our stock market is growing. So, which means that people are getting financially aware, etc. But still, we hold a lot of jewelry which we don't use. All right. Now, there are many, many reasons. One is it's outside the accounted form because we never had gold in, in that form. Much of gold held by many households is not even accounted. Then I'm going to bring it into the records unless there are some, uh, you know, um, tax uh, amnesty or something like that. So people don't invest purely for returns. They invest because they believe over the long period of time, rupee will depreciate and gold will keep going up because it's a dollar asset. There's nothing wrong about it. Second, uh, people also, it's the first asset class people go to once they become a saver. You know, as a lot of Indians come out of the, whatever I say, the poverty line or whatever, and come into the saving uh, group, one of the first asset classes they will reach out to is the gold, right? I mean, in some form, and it will be jewelry generally, which is why it is very important that they get pure gold, you know, all that stuff. Now, they don't buy it for return, but in, in, in their mind, they do think that it will give a return over a long period of time. But they're not saying in three years, I'm going to get you know, 22%, I'm going to get 12% uh, uh, net of uh, um, uh, tax. You know, they don't do that like a AIF or anything like that. So, but therefore, in terms of return, of course, as I told you, gold has given a 14.3 till 2020. This was, if you take the current figure, it should be really 16% or something like that, right? So it has given a good return. And if you take the last five years, last 10 years basis, uh, gold has performed equivalent to uh, uh, the other uh, avenues available. All right. Of course, the equity market is one of the best because it's, India is a growing country. And, you know, with economic growth, you will find that you, the returns from equity markets are higher, but there are risks as well. Right. So gold is in that sense, if you consider the risk, it's, it's given a good return comparable to this. Uh, again, these figures are available in that case for gold, as I told you. Now, 
returns and uh, what what was the other thing you uh, you wanted to um, ease in investment ease, ease of invest now that is one thing where the indian jewelers have done a phenomenal job every nook and corner of this country you have a jeweler right now the question was there were issues of purity and all that stuff now with hallmarking mandatory hallmarking coming in that problem is resolved to a large extent i wouldn't say it has gone away but it has been resolved to a lot if people know how to look for the unique id hq id as they call it and then compare it i think they are safe in buying it all right as i said it's not fully gone away there are still issues and bis is doing a fabulous job so uh, ease of investment i would say is one thing which is best e not only ease of investment even ease of selling you see what happens is in gold if you want gold you can't go to a bank you go to a jeweler whether you want to buy or you want to sell which is the which is the most attractive part of a, a jewelry this thing that's why they are uh, they are in every nook and corner there are an estimated 300000 to 350000 jewelers in india and uh, so i think the ease of investment you can go you can buy it in cash there is no kyc you know kyc is coming at some stage but you know people do find that buying gold is the easiest part because there is uh, absolutely no doubt about it returns i have spoken to you about it what is the third one you uh, mentioned risk. risk yeah the risk is purity okay one is price the price risk is always there but that is known you buy at 72 now plus gst if it drops to 68 what do you do but long term i mean you can't look at gold like uh, uh, every day you don't wake up in the morning and look at your jewelry and say what is the mtm nobody does that which is the best part of gold right i mean that's why jewelry buyers actually are the best uh, supporters of the gold industry because they buy jewelry and they forget about gold they don't wake up every day morning and say oh my mtm is high let me go and sell it and make my money they never do that now in terms of risk therefore apart from the overall price risk uh, which i think hasn't existed in india for a long period of time because people don't uh, look at it for sales uh, you have risk of purity and in recent times for the youngsters it is also about uh, you know is this gold properly sourced you see these days youngsters are used to all the brands right i mean when you buy an apple phone you buy an android i mean samsung whatever it is they make lot of claims about esg i mean i'm i'm saying that they are making lot of promises which are satisfying to us that's why you go and buy those brands you pay a lot of money right now when it comes to gold the youngsters are also looking at it um you know is this properly sourced is it coming from a conflict area let's assume you buy a jewelry and then you know somebody says that that particular shop has been buying all kinds of things they have been treating their workers badly whatever suppose such a news comes out how would you feel about the jewelry right so and these are becoming important now they are not exactly yet there people still probably will buy when there is a discount in a particular shop you know which is more important than other considerations but i i would think that these other considerations are now becoming important so when it comes to risk you have to understand that purity and sourcing becomes a big risk okay sir uh, this is just personal question as an investor so what is your strategy when it comes to investment in gold oh very simple i i thought i revealed the secret a little uh, i just invest in sovereign gold bond <laughs> i I, i yeah last few issues i missed out but otherwise you know i just invest in sovereign gold bond of course we uh, i don't i mean i have bought some physical uh, gold coins um from uh, the people reputed in the industry uh, but is very very small so normally when i think of gold uh, earlier it was etfs <clears throat> okay because that's what your advisor always tells you you know you had to put in etf etc but uh, i am uh, I, i mean i would not miss a sovereign gold bond for anything um, okay. the uh, the other thing if i really don't want it i use digital gold even this gold coin i bought coins i bought i bought it digitally first 
and then converted it into a gold coin. So that helped me. So I don't have to put one big lot. I just put small, small amounts of money, it accumulated, and then I bought uh, some gold coins from, uh, got it delivered and all that stuff. And uh, I'm very happy with the way, but I'm not a gold bug in that sense. You know, we we don't um, um, we don't have so much of gold in that uh, sense. In you know, even in our uh, household. But yeah, whatever I buy, um, you know, I would say number one will be sovereign gold bond. Number two will be a coin. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Sir, uh, uh, given that Fed has indicated that a rate could come in December this year. And there could be two more next year. What is your outlook on gold prices? See, uh, as I mentioned, rate cut is always very good for gold because the cost of holding gold, which is a non-revenue yielding as asset, is lesser. So you, it, its attractiveness increases. But as I told you, it's already been factored. And uh, <clears throat> what could probably happen is when it really happens, you could still see some favorable upside for gold. But it is very important that, uh, you know, the prices of gold have run up very fast. You know, this year itself, it's about 15% up, right? Uh, it's nearly $2,350. I don't know what the price today, but it has run up significantly. But central banks continue to buy. There is absolutely no, um, I mean, all the, all the data shows us that. Okay. Uh, but they are not uh, underwriting the price. They are doing it for a specific reason. They want to diversify their reserves. So we shouldn't draw too much inference of their buying behavior onto the prices. All right. But having said that, uh, when the rate cuts happen, you will find some impact of it, positive impact of it on the gold price. When I say positive, positive for the gold, uh, uh, for gold itself. It uh, may not be very positive for the consumers because it will keep going up. Um, but it is important to know that's not the only factor because largely that factor is, is, is already into the price. People have been talking about it. It's not a news anymore. It is just a question of when rather than if. All right. So um, one has to read a little less into it. Um, the question is, if it does not happen, what happens? That's a more important thing. Yeah, rate cuts. They have said this, they will do it. The economy is doing well. You know, there are, you know, arguments both ways. But if it doesn't happen for whatever reason, then what happens to gold will be interesting. Okay. I, I would think that uh, the price will react stronger. Okay. Because then it means that, look, the central banks don't have a proper solution for it. So gold will become a more attractive asset class in that sense. From a risk point of view. Okay. So given this uncertainty, what should an investor do? Should they should they buy now or should they wait for some more time? What should we see when you say investor, uh, uh investors with different time periods, right? I mean, I want if you are a household investor, let's take you have got equity market, you've got some debt, you've got a portfolio which is reasonable size. I would suggest that you should keep buying in small lots. You could buy at this price and just hold it. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, if, if the, the household, uh, it, I mean, the investor could be a man or a woman, but the household does not have enough jewelry. If the lady, the investor is a lady and she already does not have jewelry, um, then she can buy. All right. Um, so the important thing is to consider all the gold as one, not just the bars and coins or ETFs, you know, you should also consider what is your jewelry you're sitting on, which you're not using, you know, uh, how much does that uh, matter um, add up to. So I would think that if you're an investor like that, you it is a good price uh, to buy. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. But um, if you're, let's take a, a very large investor, okay? Now, would you put a large amount of money into gold? Uh, at this uh, point in time. Now, obviously, that depends on your, um, uh, you know, investment philosophy and things like that, and how exposed you are on other markets, you know, international markets, domestic markets, interest rate uh, risk, there's a lot of factors to take it. But if you take gold alone, is it a good price to buy? From all accounts, it looks to be a good price to buy. But let me add here a few things. See, you know, as anybody else, and I'm sure 
some of the viewers, you know, they are some of the best analysts. They know, understand the risk all the time. They understand it's much better than I. I'm just trying to give a certain perspective. We all know about the herd behavior. Gold started moving up. We are now saying 2,300. It will become 2,500, 2,600. It's a herd behavior. It is also the uh, confirmation bias. You know, they use various words, right? I mean, uh, uh, recency bias, whatever it is. But definitely there is a, I mean, everybody says it's going to go up and there is a momentum. We say gold will become 2,350 to 2,500, right? So it's a good price to buy. There's no doubt about it. I'm also part of that. But I'm just taking you back 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, when gold was coming down. I still remember when it touched nearly 1150 or something like that, it even dropped once below 1100. It's going to come down to 800 and mean like that. Okay. It's going to come to 800. It never dropped below 1000. So, and then it started moving up. So it's uh, it's very important to understand that yes, gold has a very significant role, but forecasting gold price is very very difficult because it is not linked to any one factor, uh, <clears throat> and it does not react. For instance, it did not react so much uh, to specific crisis, but once the crisis happened, it just kept moving up. All right, so it is very important to understand that gold. Um, uh, you know, predict, uh, forecasting the price of gold is a little difficult because it all depends on what other things happen, right? So uh, I would therefore say with a little bit of caution, uh, yes, gold price at these levels um, look attractive. From all accounts, they say that there is um, gold is headed upwards for the next uh, at least two years. Uh, there is a U.S. election coming up and, uh, you know, none of the uh, global tensions have eased. In fact, they are only becoming stronger. So in this, would you keep a certain amount of gold? I think everybody should. And if you are a large investor, I think it makes sense to keep gold. But if you are looking at next uh, three years, you know, things like that, very short term, then it becomes an uh, uh, I mean, it, I would leave, I wouldn't give an advice, but I would say that look, it's it's very important for you to study what happens if there is an outflow, if there is a fund which is which is going to have an outflow in three three years. You know, would they invest in gold? I, I don't know. That's a I mean that it depends on their philosophy and uh, what kind of risk they have communicated to the uh, people who have invested in the fund. But yes, as an individual. Do you think this price looks good for the next one year? Absolutely, it looks uh, great. Okay. okay, but I would not say that this um, will always remain like this. And uh, every asset class which goes up, there's always uh, something which comes down. So if it comes down, even it need not come down to uh, you know eighteen hundred or something. If it comes down by hundred dollars, then you're going to panic. All right. Today there is a momentum. There is, okay. uh, and we are all part of this bias. So it is very important to understand whenever you say, is it a good price? Yes. Subject to the fact that I'm also part of the bias, I think it's a very good price. So just one last question from my side. Uh, uh, so you spoke about increasing gold holdings by central banks. There is one thought process that this is a move towards de-dollarization. So can you share your thoughts on it? Well, yes, we have heard about this. See, uh, the terms like de-dollarization, etc., are um, uh, extremely. Uh, it doesn't belong to the investment world, right? I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's a motive. What people are saying is people are buying gold because they want uh, you know their reserves to be reflected not in U.S. Treasury bonds but as gold. Etc. Maybe some uh, logic to it. Um, you know what happened essentially was. Uh, clearly, this uh, you know the freezing of the U.S. dollar assets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then subsequently, the buying—it's all being tagged as uh, a story. There may be something in the story, but I have no idea. I, if it was part of World War Council, I would not even have uh, answered this. But now, as a you know, ind independent person, I can do that. Yes, there is a certain uh, uh, theory which says that all this has happened because. You know, you try to freeze the U.S. assets, therefore, you know, other banks are getting worried. That's why, you know, things are being moved and all that stuff comes in. Okay. Even the Reserve Bank's moving of gold, 
you know, Reserve Bank had to come out and say there's nothing about it. I mean, they, please don't read too much into all this. But then everybody wants to read a story into it. It's uh, nice. I I think forget de-dollarization. It's a motive. I don't want to discuss the motives. Now, are central banks buying gold in large quantities, 1,000 tons, etc.? Absolutely. In the first quarter itself, they bought close to 300 tons. Okay. The first quarter of this uh, calendar year. They continue to buy. Reserve Bank continues to buy. They also issue sovereign gold bonds, which is a promise to pay gold. So you must also look at it in the net uh, basis. What happens is, uh, you, you know, clearly uh, dollar alone, because dollar volatility, dollar index, extra matters, right, to central bank. Central banks always look at safety first. Okay. Then comes liquidity. Then comes return. All right. So it is not like they are going to do things because somebody said, uh, you know, um, I don't like this asset class, etc. That's not how reserves are run. They, they, I mean, central banks are extremely cautious, conservative people across the globe, I'm just saying. So we shouldn't read too much into this de-dollarization. It might make sense. Um, uh, I don't subscribe to that. It's not easy. I mean, it's there is there is a lot of reserves. Reserves are also growing of many uh, countries. The increase is going, a large share is going towards gold and gold is performing very well. Let's look at the performance of gold in the last two years. Now, I want to ask the same question. If gold price were coming down, would the investments have happened? Now, clearly, because central banks are buying, gold prices are not going up. That's not anybody's uh, case here. Yes, as I told you, it is influencing sentiment, but that's not the way gold price works, right? Gold price is determined by other factors and primarily US interest rates and futures market, etc. Therefore, currently, central banks are doing what they do best, manage their reserves. When their reserves increase, a larger share goes towards gold because it's a good uh, uh, performing asset class. That's the way I would leave it. Is it attractive enough for the central bank from all the uh, looks of it? It's a great asset class. It is, uh, they've always held it. You know, central banks have been holding what? It's now close to 35,000 tons across uh, the globe. So buying gold, uh, central banks buying gold is uh, definitely a positive news for the gold industry. But I wouldn't read anything more than that. Because then it becomes, we will have to ask, uh, you know, uh, political theorists and, you know, others, uh, not... Uh, the gold uh, discussion. Sir, uh, can we take a few questions from our viewers? Yeah. So if, uh, this is from uh, Tapan Belapurkar. He said, has demonetization and digitization reduced investments in gold? Temporarily, yes, it, they did. There is no doubt about it. But they have come back in a lot more organized manner. I wouldn't say all of gold investments in India are still organized. There is still pockets. In fact, gold is highly cash dependent even now. There is no doubt about it because there is no incentive to pay in digital mode uh, for gold. I mean, we have we pay what 18 and a half percent duty overall, right? 15 plus 3 percent uh, and all that. But uh, whether you pay in cash or you pay in digital mode, if I have to pay 18 percent, what's the incentive, right? So it still continues to be cash. There is not much of incentive to buy gold through the organized route, okay? Which is a common uh, this thing. In fact, I have always said that uh, one of the important objectives of policy making must be you buy gold in a very organized way, paying taxes, taking in, uh, invoices, you know, paying digitally. You should pay a lesser duty lesser tax should get it as a cashback or whatever it is i'm not saying it is easy to implement and uh, but it is important similarly buying gold uh, through coins or something like that through the uh, banking system should be made a lot more simpler because then more and more gold uh, stock in india becomes recyclable okay uh, next question is from, uh, how do we compare investment in gold versus silver versus uh, platinum? This well, is I, I don't track uh, silver or platinum, but uh, some experts in the industry have told me that silver has performed much better. Uh, but then this is a question, as I said, if you are <clears throat> for gold, uh, if you are a pure in investor, that's a very different uh, uh, this thing, okay? 
um, but if you are if you are a household i'm again coming back to you know common households i think gold has more relevance although in the near term um, a platinum or a silver might appear better what's important is you can actually walk to a bank and take a loan against gold you can't do that with others that's very important to understand you see these are very long term investments you you need to consider various aspects and i told you initially gold is like an insurance okay in insurance when everything is very difficult gold comes to your rescue <clears throat> will the others come to your rescue i am not sure so you need to keep all these in mind when you are investing in gold not just the uh, like you do a equity uh, share uh, or a bond uh, irr we shouldn't be doing it okay so you answer the next question but uh, the question is is investment in gold better than equity you see this is again another um, i would say i always struggle to answer this it is not one versus the other they have to how has gold performed when when policy makers ask me i always say gold has performed by increasing your risk appetite for equity because let's take i have to hold 5% of my portfolio in gold in uh, uh, in gold right so if i buy 5 rupees worth of gold what does it tell you i am now ready to invest 95 rupees in equity shares right and equity shares are also equally now at very very dizzying heights right i mean they can also be volatile so it's important to say that look gold and equity shares coexist in fact gold promotes equity risk appetite we need instruments better more investments uh, to come out so that people before taking big risks in equity market can take a little bit of gold exposure as a financial instrument and then move towards equity let's be very clear gold promotes risk appetite that's the way we should now sell it because keep gold your portfolio is stronger if the equity uh, comes down hopefully the gold will go up so your portfolio will perform better <clears throat> sir uh, next viewer wants to ask you a question her name is uh, somitra chatterjee sure. can you stand <clears throat> Yes. Somitra? Well, okay, sir. I, I'll ask uh, on his behalf whether we should prefer to buy physical gold or paper gold. Uh, I guess when he says paper gold, uh, he means ETF. As I said, there is nothing, there is no paper gold. other than sovereign gold bond which is one of the best paper gold okay everything else is physical gold right um, but i presume they are saying that what i don't hold physically in my uh, in my house in my at home is paper gold so i'm i'm taking it like that but let me make it very clear there is nothing like paper gold paper gold is a promise to give you gold okay it's not backed by gold etf is physical gold because it's backed by gold no a uh, mutual fund uh, a amc can issue a etf without buying that gold when they say you hold two units they hold that much gold in the vault okay it's backed one to one so having said that which is better if the question is asked now that as i mentioned when you are if you want to invest in gold today you have to first understand why do you want to buy gold is it purely because you want to uh, you know diversify your portfolio or you want jewelry for an occasion okay or uh, you are talking about uh, you know just making you know probably trading you know another 6 months i hope gold will touch 80000 so i want to make my money it all depends on uh, your objective um, having said that i would think that for first timers okay uh, <clears throat> physical gold you need to understand if you are if you are youngsters you are moving around you know you are um, you know cost of keeping gold is high okay otherwise you could lose the uh, you know the gold itself if you are taking a coin and keeping it somewhere it's not properly secure you could lose it so it's it's better to go for the etfs in that sense or you buy it in digital gold the digital gold platforms again i i uh, i have to say well we incubated one of the platforms so i keep talking about in every platform they are securing it 
but they are not regulated they have performed well so far hopefully we will see some regulations around it they are very safe and secure because you can keep accumulating gold and when you need it you can take a delivery of it i'll just check if there are any more questions Sir, I think uh, that's the, that was the last one, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir, for your uh, invaluable insights. I'm sure your perspective on investment, investing in gold have been enlightening and thought-provoking thought for all of us, sir. Thank you very much. I, I, I must definitely say this. You know, much of what I have said is probably known to all your viewers. They are much better analysts. I was trying to give a perspective on gold because these questions keep coming up and uh, you know it's there is no definition of, of uh, you know when you really look at it there is no definition of investor you know because the investor could be one with a seven year view one with a three year view one with a different view but everybody who invests in gold is an investor even a jewelry buyer is an investor because you are you ask her why she's buying jewelry she says i can wear it but i want money i can get it in the bank in 20 minutes and from an nbfc therefore gold has this uh, fantastic role apart from uh, the cultural uh, significance so uh, it was great talking to you and uh, answering those questions i hope um, some of them have been helpful to the people who were there many many thanks for listening to me I would also like to extend my gratitude to all my viewers for joining us today thank you very much